P-O-S-T. P-O-S-T. Post, the serials you like the most, brings you the Roy Rogers Show, starring the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. It's roundup time on the double R bar. So saddle your horse, cause we're gonna ride far. The double R bar ranch transcribes stories and songs of the real West with the Whippoorwills. The wisest trail scout of them all, Jonah Wilde, played by Forrest Lewis. The Queen of the West, Dale Evans. And in person, the King of the Cowboys, Roy Rogers. Well, howdy, folks. This is Roy Rogers. It feels mighty good to get up these mornings, doesn't it, now that Mom has Post cereals on the shelf? Yes, sir, Buckaroos, you can count on anything bearing the brand name Post. Post cereals are good. Well, sir, Dale and Jonah and I are here in the lunchroom, but we're a little uneasy because the sheriff has gone over to Charlie Fisher's place in Squaw Creek to pick up an outlaw. Some pretty rough characters hang around Fisher's place, you know. Uh, Something you want, Sheriff? I'll get you, Charlie. Just looking around. There's nothing in my place that would interest the law. Haven't seen a fellow named Kerner, have you? Artie Kerner? You ought to know better than to come in here alone, Sheriff. Yeah. You might shoot me down. Get my badge that way. As long as you couldn't get it by being elected. Huh. But about Kerner. He got a little free with his gun yesterday. I heard he had... All right, Kerner! You're not taking me! <laughs> Drop down the gun, Kerner! Drop it fast! Yeah, like this! You had your chance. The rest of you keep your hands in sight and don't interfere. I'll use both guns if I have to, but I'm taking Kerner. Charlie Fisher and the shifty-eyed men who hang out at his place watch silently as the sheriff and his prisoner go out the door, then ride away into the night. Only when the hoofbeats of their horses are no longer heard does Fisher turn from the window. All right, all right, you fellas. Yeah, I feel the same way you do. Where's Doug Birch? Right here, Charlie. Yeah. We got a job to do tonight, and I guarantee the sheriff won't be the sheriff by noon tomorrow. Maybe then we'll elect us a man who will play ball. The sheriff remains at his office late tonight. About 10 o'clock, two shadowy figures ride into Mineral City, keeping to the side streets, making their way to the sheriff's house. Charlie Fisher and Doug Birch. They break into the house, creep through the kitchen, into the living room. Yeah, you're sure that's the right money, Charlie. Yeah, I've been keeping it since a bank robbery. I couldn't use it because the bank knew the serial numbers on the bills that were stolen. But now that turns out to be a good thing. Yeah, mighty yeah. good. Yeah. Right here under the corner of this rug. All right, now spread it out so there's no lump. Ten $100 bills don't make much of a stack. There. Now, the next thing is to make arrangements so we can bring charges against the sheriff tomorrow morning early. I'm glad you sent for us, Dale. But I doubt anybody around here will take much stock in charges against the sheriff. Well, there weren't any rumors last night, but the whole town's talked of nothing else this morning. Oh, well, howdy, Sheriff. He's sneaking up on us, huh? You're just the man we want to see. So do a lot of people from all the buzzing that's going on this morning. Howdy, General's boy. Yeah, it's howdy, Tin Star. Dale was telling us something about the report, Sheriff. Uh, what have you heard? Why, the talk is that you had something to do with the bank robbery three months ago. Have you heard who's making the charges? No, only that there's to be a citizens' meeting about it today. The meeting starts in 15 minutes. Lynn Dean is making the charge. Lynn Dean? The polecat. Well, that's pretty raw. He engineered the campaign of Charlie Fisher when Charlie ran against you for sheriff. This must be his way of getting back at you, sheriff. Fisher and I had a little run-in last night, too. The meeting starts in 15 minutes, you say? Yeah. Well, come on. We're going to attend, all four of us. And nobody's pulling any fast ones if I can help it. Now, 
I'll leave you here, Dean. You go in and get started. Now, Charles, you understand I'm merely an attorney. I can't force the sheriff to do what you want done. He won't refuse the minute he stalls. Folks will figure he's guilty. Besides, why should he refuse? Yes, I see your point. Well, I shall do my best. You know you can always depend on me, Charles. <laughs> Look who's coming in. Yes, the Honorable Lynn Dean, attorney at law. Ah, he's no lawyer, Jonah. He was disbarred. Uh, my, my friends. No, listen. Fellow citizens. Yeah, sure. Ladies and gentlemen. I have been employed by a client who wishes to remain anonymous and has a serious charge to make against one of our public officials. I wonder who he's talking about. An outlaw named Artie Kerner has been arrested. Before his arrest, he confessed to my client that he took part in the Mineral City Bank robbery three months ago. He also confessed giving the sheriff ten $100 bills to let him escape. <laughs> now, now, wait, my friends, wait. Wait, I am not finished. Roy, I'm going up there and knock that Noah. Car. Now, hold it, Sheriff. Let's hear his story. Because the serial numbers on the bills taken in the robbery are known, the sheriff has not been able to use them. He demanded Kerner replace it with money he could use. And when Kerner was unable to do so, the sheriff arrested him on another charge. Dean, I want to know who your client is. I demand to know right now without any stalling. My client claims that the money Kerner paid to the sheriff is in the sheriff's house. Right now. Dean, I said I want to know. Sheriff, are you willing to have your house searched in the presence of witnesses to see if the bills are there? Hey, just a minute. Quiet down here. Take it easy. We won't get anywhere this way. Dean, what is the name of your client? I promise not to divulge his name. And an attorney's word is sacred. That's right, except you're no longer an attorney. Sheriff! Are you willing to have your house searched? Are you? Yes, no, any time. No, no, hold it. Well, Rogers, maybe you were in on this deal, too. We'll settle up for that remark later, Dean. I won't forget it. The sheriff's house will not be searched except under certain conditions. It'd be mighty easy for some crook to plant 10 $100 bills while they're supposed to be making a search. Since this so-called client won't come out in the open... I'll search the sheriff's house, and you can have as many witnesses on hand as you like. But they'll be watched by Dale Evans and Jonah Wilde. If that's agreeable, we'll go ahead. If not, you'll have to go to court and get a search warrant. It is quite agreeable, Rogers. We have no doubt of your honesty. We'll be happy to have you conduct the search. Roy, Dale, and Jonah and the sheriff go to the sheriff's house. With them is Lynn Dean and perhaps 50 citizens of Mineral City. While Dale and Jonah watch to see that no underhanded tricks are played, Roy searches the house. He does the job carefully, every room from top to bottom. Dean follows wherever Roy goes, a half-smile on his cold face. At last, the job is done. They return to the living room. Well, are you satisfied there's no money here? Uh, not quite. What? You have neglected one place in each room. I won't say purposely, because it is possible that you may have overlooked it. But I... What is the place, Dean? Under the rugs. Yeah, right. Well, I'm sure no one has any objections to looking under the rugs. Suppose we start again within the living room. Sure, why not? Roy steps over to the edge of the rug, begins folding it back. The crowd watches. The first time, there's nothing. Roy pulls back the other end of the rug... Small, rectangular pieces of green paper are revealed. The crowd gasps. Roy steps over quickly, picks them up. Lynn Dean smiles his cheerless smile. Are they the hundred-dollar bills, Rogers? They are. Ten of them? Ten. They were planted. I don't know anything about them. I swear I don't. I have here... I have here a list of the serial numbers on the stolen bills. Shall we compare them with those on these bills? After all, we don't want to convict an innocent man. 
but neither do we want a bribe-taking sheriff running loose. Dean, Dean, I want to know the name of the man behind this. In fact, there is only one place for bribe-takers, and that place most certainly is not in public office. Roy, we'd better get the sheriff out of here. Sheriff, go outside and get on trigger and ride for the Double R Bar Ranch. I'm not running out. Do what I tell you. Go ahead. Fast. Well, it looks as though Rogers doesn't want the numbers compared. Well, come on. Come on, Teen Star. Fast. Come on. No, I don't mind at all. We'll see you later, Roy. Come over here to the table. Put the list down and I'll do the same with these bills. That is fair enough. Actually, though, there's not much use. I think we'll find that these are the stolen bills. Oh, you admit it then. I admit this much, that the bills were planted, and that I'm going to find out who did it. You'll find it hard to prove those charges. Now, you're going to tell me the name of your mysterious client. Stand back, Rogers. Right now, Dean, you've done a serious Stand thing. Stand back, I say. You're trying to ruin the reputation of a sheriff who's been honest and worked hard all... No, Rogers, no. You're telling me what? He's in cahoots with the crooked sheriff. You can see that he is. Come here, Dean. No, 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 I'm leaving. Don't let Rogers come after me. Hold him there, then. He's in cahoots with a bribe. To... All right, go ahead. But before I'm through, both Dean and his client will be behind bars. You can stake your life on that. <laughs> How about them? How about them? How about those great nuts flakes? How about those great nuts flakes? How about them? How about them? How about those great nuts flakes? They are so good, good for you too. The two minute energy works for you. So how about them? How about them? How about great nuts flakes? Yep. How about those grape nuts flakes? Things are sure are jumping at the ranch, and that's just the time a fellow needs a great energy-given cereal like grape nuts flakes. Just two minutes after you polish off a bowl full of grape nuts flakes, your body starts to use their powerful whole wheat energy. That's faster than you can saddle a range pony. And take it from an old hand, you'll really hoop and holler about grape nuts flakes' sugar-roasted flavor. It's plum delicious. So ask Mom to get you Grape Nuts Flakes, the great two-minute energy cereal with a picture of Roy Rogers right on the front of the box. How about them? How about them? How about Grape Nuts Flakes? Grape Nuts Flakes, one of the famous triple wrap post cereals. Guaranteed fresh or triple your money back. <laughs> The sheriff of Paradise Valley has been accused of bribe-taking, and with some reason, for part of the loot from a bank robbery has been found in the sheriff's home. Roy, Dale, and Jonah alone believe in his innocence. They helped the sheriff escape to Roy's ranch, and they're keeping him there until they can investigate further. Roy, I can't just sit here and do nothing. Everything I've stood for all these years is being destroyed. We know you're not guilty, Sheriff. Let's keep her heads clear. Yeah, you know, there was a frame-up like this when I was in the Army. A lady I knowed, Carolyn the Coyote, oh. was one of the enemy. But there was something strange about her. She just couldn't resist the call of a coyote. Every time she heard one, she'd come a-running. And I have to listen to this, too. Well, General Thomas Kenneth Rowe, smart man that he was, very often would step out of his tent and give a coyote howl. Oh. Oh, that was a sight to see the general howling. How I wish Jonah had never passed his physical. Me too. Well, sir, Carolyn, out behind the enemy lines, she'd hear that, and being fascinated, she'd start heading for the sound. <laughs> she'd run right into our camp, and the general would grab her and make her tell the enemy's plans. Uh, well, that is, until one night... Uh, excuse when... me, Jonah. <laughs> Sheriff, I think I've got an idea. Oh, just when I get to the exciting part. Go ahead, Roy. I'll do anything you say. Convolution. Uh, where did you put this Artie Kerner you arrested last night? In the jail at Squaw Creek? Why? You know, he may be the key to this whole thing. Kerner was in Charlie Fisher's place when you got him. You put Fisher in a bad spot when you walked out with Kerner. He may have planted the money to get back at you. It's logical to have Lynn Dean front for him, too. They're old friends. Well, there might be something in that. Oh, poor old Karen. She just couldn't How see... How are you going to get proof, though? No fudge. From Artie Kerner. He's new in this territory, and he won't know us. Sheriff, I want you to sneak us into the office of the jail at Squaw Creek. Then try to put us in the cell next to his. Put you in a cell? No, try to put us in. We'll object. We may even have to knock you out, but we'll take it easy. I want to win Kerner's confidence. That's the important thing right now. Wait 
wait out here. Keep watch. Sure, Roy. If somebody came in and told Colonel who we are, everything would be spoiled. Yeah, well, somebody to come in and told Carolyn. As quick as we're inside and the door's closed, you start getting rough, Sheriff. Yeah, and don't be surprised if we get rougher. Come on. Oh, what a pleasure this is going to be. Sheriff, you're the fellow who has been calling me General's boy. You also made out like my true and bona fide experiences is lies. Oh, if I'd only brought my saber. All right. Get in there where you belong. Hey, who do you think you're pushing around? Get your hands off of me, tin bag. Uh, maybe a few months in the lockup will cool you off. But we're not going anywhere. Roy and Jonah turn on the sheriff, swinging hard, but pulling their punches. The sheriff stumbles, falls. Roy and Jonah go after him again. An interested spectator in one of the cells watches intently. Hardy Kerner. The sheriff gets up. Roy hits him and he goes down. Seemingly, he's been knocked unconscious. <sighs> that did it. Well, maybe I ought to give him another one. Let's get out of here before we run into a deputy. We want to find a hideout right away. Hey, I know a place you guys can hide out if you're looking for one. Yeah? Yeah, sure. The sheriff keys are on the floor where he dropped them. You let me out and I'll take you right to it. How about it, Jonah? Think we can trust him? Well, I don't see no sense in letting the crook stay locked up. Okay. We'll let you out. There's a girl waiting for us. We'll take her along. We need a hideout just for today. There's some business we want to take care of when night comes. Who, oh, who, oh boy? Steady, Phil. Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, yeah. ho, here. Yeah, that's the hideout. That store building up ahead. You can tell us about it before we go in. Got into trouble myself once, walking into a place. A coyote... Hold it, Jonah. Uh, the hombre who runs it, a fellow named Charlie Fisher, welcomes men who follow the owl who trail. He protects them. And if they get into trouble, he gets them out. That sounds interesting. Of course, he takes a percentage of whatever you make work in this territory. We don't pay a percentage to anybody unless they help do the actual work. Anyway, we just got one job to do. We'll do it tonight and be gone by morning. Okay. I know how you feel. Thanks for helping me, anyhow. Oh, uh, just a minute. Huh? Maybe you can help us. Do you know where we can lay our hands on some dynamite? Enough to blow a safe? We're not admitting anything. I can get you a man who'll work the lock. He can beat any combination ever made. Is he in Fisher's place? Yeah. Want me to ride up and bring him out? Well, let's see. Uh, tell you what. Suppose you have him meet us here after dark, say about 8 o'clock. Uh, we don't want to be seen any more than we can help. Oh, sure, I get you. You're sure this man is good? He's more than good. He's one of the boys who took the Mineral City Bank three months ago. Say, now, there's just a kind Fine. of... Fine. We'll really appreciate getting in touch with him. Bring him here at 8 o'clock sharp. <laughs> We want to be sure you can do the job, Birch. There's a lot of money involved, and we got just one chance at it. Birch is the best in the business. I wouldn't give you a bum steer after what you did for me. Ah, look, you want me okay. If not okay, but don't expect me to give out with a list of the jobs I've done. I don't confess to nobody, especially people I meet in the darkest way and can't see their faces. Ah, yeah, they're all right, Birch. I told you they knocked out the sheriff and turned me loose. Can anybody vouch for you outside of Kerner? Yeah, sure. Charlie Fisher. Fisher, Birch, and I are the ones who did that job I mentioned. The bank job? What? You told them about that job? Strangers? That's all the confession we want. Right. Roy comes to life, swings out of Doug Birch. Connor and Dale close in on Kerner. There are two men who know the inside story, the real story of how the sheriff was framed. Doug Birch is tough and hard, a fighter who knows his business. Roy goes down. He seems to be hurt. He's having a hard time getting up. Birch rushes in to finish him. Roy makes one quick move. He's on his feet, swinging. Birch topples to the ground, knocked off. Roy steps over to help Dale and Jonah. Kerner is already weakened. One swift jab of Roy's arm. Kerner is through. We're doing all right, Roy. So far. Yeah, well, it ain't nothing to the time Carol and the coyote was framed. <laughs> We've still got two more rattlers to catch. Two? Fisher and Dean. Let's put a rope around these boys. We'll go after Fisher first. Do you still have those $100 bills we found under the sheriff's rug, Dale? Yeah, in my pocket. Well, keep them there for now. We'll need them inside. Okay. Wait for us, Trigger. Hold on, isn't that Fisher coming out the door? Yeah, it sure enough is. 
Fisher and Dean both. They must be up to something else. This will save us a lot of trouble. Stand quiet. Fisher? You, Rogers. Good evening, Dean. Hey, if you're here... What do you want, probably... Rogers? Found something that belongs to you, and we brought it over. Dale, where's Fisher's money? Right here. That's the ten one hundred dollar bills we found under the sheriff's rug. Take it, Fisher. He's trying to connect you. He's with... not connecting me with anything. Fisher's gun was out in a flash. Roy was holding out the ten bills to Fisher, and there's a fraction of a second too late on his draw. Fisher has the drop on Roy, Dale, and Jonah. Mm, what a situation! This won't do you much good, Fisher. We've already got a confession from two of your men. We know you were in on the Mineral City bank robbery. All right, Dean, get on your horse and ride out of town. Now stay away until I send word it's safe for you to come back. But you need help with these people, Charles. Now do what I tell you. I don't want any witnesses for this. Not even you. Now get going. Ever dream that a cereal could be so delicious folks would be eating it all day long? Well, you know, there is such a cereal, Post Sugar Crisp. As a cereal, it's dandy. For snacks, it's so handy. Or eat it like candy. Folks start off eating Post Sugar Crisp at breakfast time. It's really a treat with milk or cream. No sugar needed. It's just sweet enough. Long about snack time, you'll reach for the Sugar Crisp, too. Its wholesome wheat and rich candy coating makes it a wonderful between-meal pickup. And then there are lots of folks who take Sugar Crisp right along with them, wherever they go, and nibble it right out of the package. Like candy. Think of it. A cereal treat so delicious you just can't stop eating it. So make sure you try Post Sugar Crisp and have it for breakfast first thing tomorrow. Get Post Sugar Crisp in the giant or regular size package with the three little bears on the front. Sugar Crisp, one of the famous triple wrap Post cereals. Guaranteed fresh or triple your money back. Get going, Dean. Get out of town. Whatever fast. you say. Wait a minute, Dean. Uh, what? Before you run off, you'd better look at my saddlebags. I, why, I... You might find something there that'll change your mind. I... Better look, Charles. Well, make it snappy. Mm -hmm, sure, nobody listened when I wanted to tell him about Carolyn. Now we are conquered and catched. The ex-lawyer Dean walks warily over to Trigger's side. Trigger snorts, suspicious of strangers as always, but stands quiet because Roy is nearby. In the saddlebag, Dean. That's it. Dean raises his hand to reach inside the saddlebag. As he does so, Roy shouts. Trigger, take him! Take that man, boy! And in shouting, Roy lunches forward at Fisher. His fist strikes against Fisher's jaw, and Fisher's gun is discharged harmlessly into the air. Roy connects again. Fisher reels. Dale and Jonah jump into the fight, but before they can get there, Roy swings again. Fisher is down. Help! Help! Call him off! Trigger, hold it! Hold it, Trigger! That's enough, fella. Boy, what a haul these two make. Yeah, well, we could have done it sooner if I'd have brought my saber along. Dean, get over there. On your feet, Fisher. You've got another speech to make to the folks of Paradise Valley. Then you're going away for a long rest. I don't know how to express my appreciation to you folks. Oh, forget it, Sheriff. We were glad to be able to help. Yes, even if you do go around calling some people General's boy, won't listen when I'm telling you... Jonah! You were telling us something about a woman spy. Well, yeah. Eh? I believe you said her name was Carolyn the Wolf. Coyote. But you... But you... Go would... ahead, Jonah. I'd like to hear about her. Well, by doggies, I never thought I'd live to see this day. It's little enough to do to show my appreciation. Well, go ahead, Jonah. <laughs> He's probably forgotten. No, 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 I ain't. I say, no, I ain't. Never forget. Well, like I said, any time the general wanted to find... The... This was General T.K. Rowe, of course. Uh-huh. Yes. Yes. When the general wanted to know the enemy's plans, he would howl like a coyote and Carolyn would come running. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Carolyn just couldn't resist the call of a coyote. Well, sir, one night the general stuck his head outside of his tent, let out a howl, and waited. Well, then he'd give another howl and waited. And he was about to give a third when he heard something run up. 
It's me, Carolyn, he said, real soft. And with that, he heard a growl and felt something a bite in his leg. Carolyn thought she was a real coyote. No, a real coyote had come into camp, and seeing the general howl, he figured he was a rival for his mate. Oh, Jonah. <laughs> well, now, the general didn't know that. He thought Carolyn bit him, and he had her arrested and court-martialed. She would have been shot at sunrise, only me and, and Snoop and Saul saved her. Snoop and Saul was a sergeant, you see. Snoop and... and Jonah, I, I think... Uh, no, he... no, let him go on. Yes. Well, Carolyn was in the guardhouse waiting for her last sunrise when me and Saul howled like coyotes. Carolyn just could not resist. Say, she couldn't resist. Mm. She tore right through the dobe walls and run to Saul's arms. And they got married, you know. <laughs> Snoop and Saul and Carolyn the coyote? Oh, yes. Real love match. And their uh, firstborn son, I suppose they called him... Bertrand the Banana. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Frying Pan Florence and Mess Kit Mary. Oh. Twins. Both girls. Start oh. running! Now, 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 stop that now, or I'll take that shiny badge off of your shirt and pin it on the seat of your britches. Start <laughs> running <laughs> while you cut the chairs! Roy, aren't you going to stop him? <laughs> no, let him go. There's a limit to how grateful a man can be. It's the sheriff's turn now. <laughs> Feeling fine because there's lots of time Until we're all homeward bound To work and slave with cattle Sweat and swear in battle Until payday rolls around What does a cowboy do When all of his work is through Just what I'm gonna do now With money to spend and jingle Off into town to mingle With all my friends I allow Maybe my blue-eyed gal will wait for her bronco pal and ride o'er the hot desert ground. True heart and golden hair know that I'll soon be there when payday rolls around. I'm dressing up in style for in a little while I'm gonna That's all for now, folks. This is Roy Rogers saying to all of you, from all of us, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. Happy trails to you Until we meet again Happy trails to you Keep smiling until then Roy Rogers Show is brought to you by Post Serials each week at this same time with the Whippoorwills, Forrest Lewis, Dale Evans, and the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. An Art Rush production transcribed, directed by Tom Hargis, script by Ray Wilson, music by Milton Charles. Featured in today's cast were Frank Hemingway, Bob Griffin, Herb Butterfield, Charlie Seal, and Polly Bear. This is Art Ballinger speaking for P.O.S.T. Post cereals. Happy trails to you until we meet again. Happy trails to you. Keep smiling until then. Who cares about the clouds if we're together? Just sing a song and bring the sunny weather Happy trails